What's up everyone? I know it's been quite some time. Uh, if you watched my last video on the brake ducts, which was probably almost two months ago now. That was the last one. I apologize, just been really busy. A lot of stuff going on. So if you watched the last couple videos, you'd know that I have a track day, my first track day that is, coming up um, about mid-July at Gingerman um, for West Michigan Honda Meet, if you didn't know. And there's still a lot of stuff that needs to be done on this thing. I've been trying to chip away at it, but just haven't had enough time. And I've had projects like the brake ducts that aren't essential. I gotta put those aside for now. I'm going to do essential things that are going to, I wouldn't say necessarily make or break my track day, but things that need to be done. Uh, so I'm gonna try to wrap all those up today, or at least in this video. And then if I have time before the track day, I'm gonna try to do other things like the brake ducts, a couple other little projects, but let's get into it. So on today's agenda, I have a bunch of parts. I have full silicone coolant hose set for a multitude of different sizes of T-bolt clamps. Um, I hate regular worm gear clamps, I'm just not a fan. I'm gonna give these a try. I've used them in the past and I've had good luck. I've never actually converted all the way to them. And we got a bunch of small size, like fuel injection style, that are basically the same deal. I'm gonna go to that. God dang, these birds are loud, apologize. Um, other than that, I have a nice little small oil cooler. I also have an adapter plate, which is also thermostatic, which is pretty sweet. Bunch of AN line fittings. I got some more stuff over here. Um, bunch of parts. Oh shit, also. Motul RBF 600, racing plate. Racing brake fluid, I think, is essential. Um, and back in the day when I first owned this car, I had originally planned to use that same style oil cooler. And I had already welded these tabs onto the core support. If you can see those. Not my best execution. Long time ago. I'd probably do better now if I was to do it, but they're there. If they actually fit that oil cooler, which I believe they will. I'm just going to run with them for now, maybe change it up later. Um, other than those things, I have, which I believe I showed this in a previous video, long, long time ago. There is a auto meter oil pressure gauge in that dash pot that's basically just been sitting there, uh, not functional. So I'd like to know my oil pressure. Ideally, I'd like to know oil temp because I'm running this cooler. I'm going to add that, I just have to figure out a better gauge setup because I don't quite like that cluster pod anyway. I might take the radio out of the center, make some gauges there, move the radio down to the bottom by the cup holder. We'll see. What else do I got to do? I'm going to, since I have all the coolant drained out, putting new coolant hoses on, I'm going to go with straight distilled water with maybe some water wetter, which I know a lot of tracks require that. I'm not sure about Honda meat, but I'm going to do it anyway. It's summertime. I'm just going to do that. Just in case I do any other track days, I'll be ready to go. Um, what else? I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I'm going to get straight into draining coolant. Uh, I think I'm going to do that first before I get into all the oil stuff. Um, so I'm going to do that. <laughs> Coolant is draining, making a freaking mess. I hate messing with coolant. It's one of my least favorite things. I'm going to better go through my kits here. I have two. Now these are a, you know, knockoff, Chinese probably made kit, but they seem really nice. Like they're full silicone, um, really flexible. They seem nice. The shapes even seem right. Um, to me seem much better than a regular old rubber replacement from the parts store and I got these for a really good price and they had to send me two kits because one of them was actually missing this hose here. So I have doubles of almost everything so I'm going to take the double set with me to track just in case anything does happen with one of them which I don't expect. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of lay these out figure out where they all go and while I'm waiting for that coolant to drain down and we'll go from there.
So I tried to set up a time lapse and I forgot to hit the freaking button to start it. So it's going to be pretty short, but I got a little bit of work, which I know isn't exciting anyway. But all the hoses are removed, um, everything I'm going to do. And I just realized that this thing is not running an idle air control valve. It's plugged in, but there's no coolant going to it. Um, and it actually idles okay and cold starts are not bad. So I'm just going to roll with it for now because all that stuff's going to be coming off in the future. Hopefully near future I have a plan I'll show you a little sneak peek of. But anyway, back to that. So pile of old rubber hoses. I'm glad I'm doing this because a lot of these were really cracked. Um, see all those. A lot of them are looking like that. And I just don't want to get out to the track and have one of these things spring a leak. Spring a leak. That's the whole reason I'm doing this thing. But uh, I've got all my new ones laid out with their corresponding clamps and I made a bonehead move and didn't order enough of this size. I'm going to be too short. It pains me, but I'm going to have to use two worm clamps back by the heater hoses, um, which is fine. I'll put them in an accessible spot where I can easily switch them out. I'll order two more up. It'll be fine. Not the biggest deal. Also did find this. This is the loop uh, out of the back crossover pipe that would normally go to the idle air control valve where they kind of looped it together and that is a major failure point. I'm glad I am doing this because that one probably would have bit me and it's in a hard spot to get to plus you know when coolant's hot you're dealing with all that it's just not a good time especially trackside I'm sure so I'm gonna go ahead get everything cleaned up um, the inlet and outlet of the water the radiator are pretty corroded just on the outside and shit from the hoses starting to leak so I'm gonna clean those up I might even pull that thing out and give it a nice clean just because it looks kind of crusty, it's bothering me, so I might do that. I'm also going to line these up to the old hoses, get them nice and trimmed up, because these are all just slightly too long, which is a good thing. Um, then I will get into popping them all in. I'll probably throw that on time lapse, blah, 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 you know what I mean. So I went ahead and pulled the radiator like out. Like I said, this is a old Fluidine. I remember purchasing this thing a long time ago with this foul fan on it. It's got a nice, like, sealed type shroud fits okay um this thing isn't in the greatest shape anymore there are some pretty corroded jacked up fins but i think it's going to work for now um it's been cooling just fine i'm going to roll with it for now just because i don't really have it in the budget to buy a new radiator at least a quality radiator at the moment so um i'm just going to clean this thing up and it's a little corroded as you can see i'm going to throw it on the buffer give it a nice polish um even though it will be replaced soon, it just makes me feel better about it because it just looks kind of crappy. Okay, so I went ahead and cleaned this thing up real nice. Polished it. Look how shiny it is. Even uh, took the plate off the radiator, polished it up because it was pretty crusty. Also changed the four mounting bolts because they were super rusty. Um, probably not the <laughs> most wise time spent probably took me 40 minutes but it looks so much better and I feel better about it so it'll look good in the engine bay for now. Something I need to do is the actual mounting point for the radiator uh, stay. The welded nut on the bottom side is gone. I remember doing that a long time ago. It, it rusted off um, and I just always put a nut on the bottom but I don't want to deal with that. I'm going to go ahead and riv nut it real quick. Just renewed my supply of uh, M6 stainless rib nuts, and of course that hole's not big enough. No more fussing with a nut on the bottom. All right, guys, i got to use a light here. It got dark on us, but radiator is in. Nice and shiny. All the new silicone hoses are in. 
actually worked out really well. And those two worm gear clamps I said I had to use because I was short, I actually had to use up here on the loop hose just because these T-bolts are real bulky and they just wouldn't fit right. So I had to use them there. I'm okay with it. Um, if it's any two that I think would be good and accessible, it's those, so I'm fine with that. Um, so as far as coolant, everything goes, that's good. So um, I just got to fill it with some distilled water. I don't know if I mentioned that, but going to a track day, a lot of tracks don't allow coolant, so it will be going to distilled water. Now, on to my oil cooler. Actually, I'll take you back up here. Way back when I first had this car, the last time I was building it, I had put some tabs on the radiator support for an oil cooler, and the oil cooler I made it for is long gone. I bought this one, it's a G+, Plus, which is just kind of like a standard oil cooler, and it's Chinese, but believe it or not, it's exactly the same part as another pretty popular main brand that starts with Mishi and ends with Moto. So just so you know, it's the same thing. Um, but that's going to work. The mounts are just a hair. They're like an eighth inch too narrow, but I can mount it on top of them and use a couple spacers and all that. That's going to be fine for now. I don't want to go overboard with making new mounts because I'll, I'll never get it done. Uh, just going to do it for now and later change the mounts if it doesn't work out. Now I'm on to running the oil lines for the oil cooler. I have this also G Plus adapter plate. Um, it's a nice piece. It, it seems really similar to the Gretty one in construction and looks. It's also thermostatic. If you can see the spring in there. Uh, came with my adapter. And I'm going to get that put on. And then start making my AN lines. I got a whole kit here, bunch of bunch of fittings, plenty of line. I got two kits, plenty to go around. So I can't really show you that adapter plate. It's kind of hard to get in there. I'm gonna get that mounted on the block, and then start running my lines. It's kind of dark in here. I'm gonna do my best to record it. Um, I just I got behind, sidetracked, whatever, and it got dark. So guys, after that last clip, it got pretty late. I was pretty tired. I didn't want to make too much noise out here. And uh, so I called it a night. I'm back out here again. I uh, have to go to work here in a few hours. I'm going to try to get as much done as I can. It's kind of hard to see. Let's see if I can get this thing down in there. Probably not. Might be able to see. I got one line on. Route it up here. With a 90 into the oil cooler. The oil cooler is kind of half mounted. Good enough for now. And... I kind of looped the line big back there because I have a certain power adder that you might have seen little glimpses of so far in this video on my table. Uh, it's going to go in that area. So I got to kind of keep some room. I don't want to have to make new lines. If I have to shorten them, that's fine, but I really don't want to have to waste these. So kind of leaving a little bit of space back there for that. So I'm going to get into making my next fitting and line to go up to here and then we can maybe fire this thing up this one's gonna get a 45 got my dash 10 hose and then i'm sure you guys have seen these before they're pretty neat cheap on amazon little an vice uh aluminum vice clamps they're magnetic they kind of work okay sticking to the jaws um, but you can hold one side of your fitting and then nicely tighten. You're not trying to struggle with two wrenches. Works pretty good. You guys have never done AN fittings or hose before. It's pretty simple um, once you get it down. I like to, which this end has already been cleanly cut, take your back nut. These ones actually slip on pretty easy. But can't see it in there but there's some dust I'm gonna blow this out with some compressed air real quick just to get all that crap out of there okay and I like to use a little bit of silicone spray to help lubricate the fitting a little better uh, makes it tighten up much easier you can also use engine oil you know I just prefer to use this it's cleaner and it won't hurt anything 
and get this started. And getting in the vise here. This just makes it so much easier. Easy as that. Nice and secure. All right, so now both the feed and return lines are in. They will get clamped together. I've got these little nice aluminum separators that bolt to it. It'll kind of push this back down, keep it, like I said, looped out of the way for now. And then I have some heat sleeving I'm going to put uh, over these two here just because it's kind of close to this wild header. I just want to keep it cooling the oil as it should and not heating the oil. So uh, probably won't look the best, but it is what it is, you know, race car stuff. Um, so I think after that, I'm actually going to, I'm going to get under there, tighten up the two lines to the adapter plate. And then I'm going to lift the lines up, actually pre-fill them with oil, and I think I'm going to pre-fill the cooler as well, just to try to eliminate any dry spots um, or loss of oil pressure. I'll probably, you know, really, this is thermostatic, so pumping it or cranking it and letting the oil pump is really not going to make a difference because it's not going to open and push oil through that thing until it is opened and to temp, which I believe is like 170. So, just to take a little bit of precaution get it as close as we can so there's no dry patches um, can't really show that too well so tighten those up pre-fill the lines and then fill this thing with water and I think we're ready to fire it up all right guys got the oil cooler pre-filled pre-filled the lines which was kind of a pain in the butt made a mess trust me you didn't want to see it <laughs> um, so now time to fill this thing with some distilled water and I think crank it over um, if I'm being honest not if I'm being honest I don't have 100% confidence in these oil lines not the work I did the fittings themselves a couple of them seem a little sloppy after they're tightened which kind of makes me a little nervous and also the adapter plate the AN to pipe thread fittings just they had no ring I taped them also we'll see fingers crossed if it's all real junk shit and I gotta take it all off I gotta take it off it is what it is all right I unplugged the distributor cranked it over a few times don't see any leaks of any sort so far but that doesn't mean much uh, throw this intake back on real quick fire it up guys pushing outside it's been idling for quite a few we're up to operating temp uh, so far so good I'm really watching that adapter plate I'm not seeing anything and what's good is when I touch this side of the oil cooler it's hot this side dead cold warm dead cold so that tells me the oil cooler is doing its job and the thermostat has opened and oil is flowing through and so far, no leaks. That's a good sign. Pretty stoked. All my coolant hoses seem to be good so far. Um, so, pretty happy so far. I'm maybe going to take it around town a little bit, cycle it, and make sure it's good. I'm not going to go too far. 
uh, but I really want to get it under load, get some miles on it, and get it really up to temp uh, to make sure nothing's leaking. So we're back out here once again, um, trying to finish up everything I need to do for Honda Meat. And I've been noticing for a while now some oil seepage, I believe is just the valve cover gasket. So I got a new Honda set. We're going to go ahead and install that. Nothing too exciting, but it's got to be done. Okay, valve cover is off, and if you ever noticed in previous videos or not, probably not, this upper timing cover was missing and now I know why. Um, this engine is a JDM D15B VTEC and this upper timing cover, if you can tell by that where the dipstick should be, this is from a newer D16 like a uh, Y7, Y8. Uh, I'm not sure which one it's from but it didn't really fit quite perfectly. Um, I'm amazed they got the lower cover on, maybe that one bolts right up, but this top cover was much more difficult. I had to trim it, do a few things, and it looks like crap because there's a hole cut in it. I'm assuming it came off an engine that had an adjustable timing gear, cam gear. This one does not. So I put it on anyway just because I didn't like the timing belt being exposed. So that took a little bit of time, but that is done. And I tested the valve cover. It does fit, so we're all good. Um, need to now... pull out this old crappy gasket um, still fairly soft but it was leaking pull out the spark plug tube seals which we have brand new ones we also have brand new upper seals for the cover bolts I have the new cover gasket out there in the Sun getting warmed up Honda packages them all crumpled up so I'm not going to show you that, it's not very exciting. I'm going to change those out, pop it back on, and hopefully that oil leak is solved and that's one less thing to worry about. I'm getting closer all the time. All right guys, so I forgot to film this clip yesterday. Valve cover is on, new gaskets. These nice gold little bolt seals look pretty nice. And I really wanted to wait to do this because I'm going to be welding some bungs to the valve cover for a catch can setup, which I do have a reason to have a catch can, so you just have to wait and see that. Um, but I really wanted to wait, but it needed it because it was seeping and I'm going to this track day. I don't want to leave oil on the track or anything like that. So that's done. I pressure washed the whole block. It looks nice and clean. I even scuffed up the header because it had some really nasty tarnish on it. it looks much better. Um, so other than that, it's just throwing in my brake fluid, bleeding the brakes, and this thing is ready for track day. So I'm pretty excited about that. Cannot wait to get this thing out there. 